Hello everyone and welcome back to the Matt Vid Pro AI YouTube channel. If you've been watching this channel for a while and you aren't subscribed, please consider it. It helps the channel out a lot. Oh, and if you want to get more involved with the community, we have a phenomenal Discord server where everyone seems to be getting access to Dolly 3 lately. So if you want to see some cool Dolly 3 images, I highly suggest you check that server out. Oh, also follow me on Twitter. Shameless shilling aside, today we actually have some really fun AI news. The main big news comes from Meta or Meta AI. You see, they just had their Meta Connect, which is some big virtual event where they announce all their new stuff and basically talk about what they're doing. And I think the main purpose of that event was to show off their new piece of hardware, the Meta Quest 3. But they also spoke a lot, and I mean a lot about AI, more than most other companies have been lately. So it seems like Meta is all in on AI, and they're actually going to be integrating it with their current hardware and software. So without further ado, let's dive in. So here we are, we're right on the Meta AI website where they talk about all their new generative AI stuff. It's pretty surprising the direction that they've taken in the AI space. And don't worry guys, I'm going to provide as much context as I possibly can on the rest of the AI market in comparison to what Meta is doing here because I think it's very important that we do. So introducing new AI experiences from Meta. Oh my god, so exciting. A new class of generative AI features that expand and strengthen the ways people connect with each other. And they've got this thing that says explore, create, do more. We now have new creative tools that allow you to create and share custom stickers or update the visual style of your photos with a simple text prompt. Here's the big one. Chat with 28 different AIs and get unique perspectives on topics like travel, games, and food. These new experiences will help you have fun, connect, and learn something new. So we'll talk a little bit more about that, but this right here, the chatting with 28 different AIs, well, this is pretty similar to some websites that have already existed for quite some time now. And in fact, in some ways, those websites might actually be better. First thing here is a personal assistant. This is an Alexa, a chat GPT, a Siri, but they're just calling it Meta AI. And I think that's a lot better of a name than Bard. By the way, every time that I mention I don't like the name Bard as an AI chatbot, I get someone named Bard in the comments saying, you know, I'm really offended by that. And you, look, if your name is Bard, I think that's a fantastic name, but you're not an AI chatbot and you're not a product. Like if Meta AI were to call this John AI, I think that would be pretty weird. Anyways, this is now in beta. Meta AI is an assistant that you can chat with one on one or message inside of group chats, which is really freaking cool, actually. Like imagine if you could just invite chat GPT in your Apple group messages or, you know, even your Snapchat group messages. It has the ability to make recommendations in a pinch, make you laugh when you need a good joke, settle a debate in a group chat or generally be there to answer questions or teach you something new. So, yeah, it's it's chat GPT. This is based on Meta's Llama 2 architecture. This is the large language model that is open source and anyone can use. It's a fantastic open source model, but it doesn't really compete at that chat GPT level of quality in terms of responses, but it's not bad. As you can see, they just got a little example. They're just doing some very basic creative work here. Hey, still, they are ahead of Apple in this game because Apple hasn't upgraded Siri with any form of LLM yet, but maybe they're taking their sweet time to let things bake in the oven, so to speak. Anyways, moving on down, this is a pretty huge announcement. They haven't spoken much about their AI art models yet, but they've been working on them. Dream it, create it, generate images you can't capture with a camera. Just describe an image for Meta AI to create like slash imagine a fairy cat in a rainbow forest and watch your idea come to life. All right, right off the bat, guys, you're all going to recognize the slash imagine command from Midjourney. Now, it's not like Midjourney owns this or anything. You know, Midjourney can't sue Meta AI, but uh, Meta, what are you thinking? Why would we say slash imagine anytime we want to create something when we're chatting with the bot? Shouldn't the bot just be able to pick up on the context that we want to create something? Like even Bing AI can do that. We can tell Bing AI like, hey, I, I want to make an image of this. And it'll be like, OK, I'll try to do that. And I assume when ChatGPT with Dolly 3 
integration comes out in the next few weeks, it'll be very similar. ChatGPT already has this functionality with plugins where it can just recognize when it needs to use a plugin and there's like hundreds of plugins out there. So why can't you guys just make it so I don't have to use this slash imagine command? Maybe they thought this was like a marketing tactic because it's so popular with Midjourney. Guys, I don't think Midjourney customers are really the, the same target market here. I think really you're targeting your current meta customers, right? Because this is a chat bot that's going to be available in Facebook Messenger, Instagram, WhatsApp. Who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. But yeah, you can see from this little demo image, this thing actually ain't half bad. Like it looks pretty good. A fairy cat in a rainbow forest. It all looks pretty fun. It's probably somewhere around the SDXL mid-journey range. It is a homebrewed model though, so if they were to, let's say, release this thing open source, it would be a pretty big shock. However, they haven't made any announcements. They didn't show a single example that had this thing creating text though, so I don't think this model is as capable as Dolly 3, probably not even close to that. And it might even be less capable than SDXL because SDXL actually can do some very slight sentences and stuff sometimes with text. Next up here, you can ask at Meta AI, invoke at Meta AI into your group chats to get recommendations for a group trip, let's say spark ideas for dinner party recipes, or just add a bit of fun with photorealistic images. So everyone can generate, by the way, for completely free, this is all free. Those group chats just seem so interesting to me, but I don't have real group chats in any of these apps. So I don't really know if I'm gonna be using this day to day just cause I'm not a huge Meta customer. But yeah, this isn't necessarily anything new, but there isn't a lot of group chat AI integration out there just yet. And finally, this thing can search the web with Bing. So yeah, this actually can use the same exact search that I believe is integrated inside of ChatGPT and of course the Bing AI search. So this is actually a partnership with Microsoft, two companies kind of competing in the AI space a little bit, but also at the same time working together. It's a little weird, but yeah, at Meta AI, what is the average year round temperature in Buenos Aires? And then it'll give you a result that comes from Bing. So it does have access to factually correct information. So this is like, I think some of the biggest news to come from all of this that everyone seems to be talking about is the universe of characters chat with your choice of 28 AIs now in beta each has a unique personality mannerisms and backstory so the first thing that's a little bit strange that they're doing here is they're having familiar faces uh, some of our AI characters are played by recognizable public figures including Tom Brady as this AI named the brew a wisecracking sports debater Mr. Beast as Zach a big brother who will run roast you, and Naomi Osaka as Tamika, an anime-obsessed cosplay expert. So I'm not really knocking on the character ideas necessarily. I just think it's really funny that they're taking these famous people and then converting them into like this AI to try to make it personable. It's a little bit strange, but you know, maybe it's to try to get the uh, average everyday person a little bit more interested in AI and actually test it out. They do have one that I am very happy about and I think is pretty awesome, but they also have more AIs to explore. And now this is starting to get pretty familiar if you are into AI. Each AI specializes in different topics, including games, food, travel, humor, creativity, and connection. And they each have profiles on Instagram, Facebook, so you can explore what they're all about. So essentially you can follow them on like Instagram. <laughs> as if they're a real person, and I don't know, I guess they might make posts sometimes, who knows? But yeah, you'll be able to essentially DM them. So, what we see here is different categories, games, interests, humor, and then a bunch of like chatbots. What does this remind you of? Yeah, as we've been saying, look familiar guys? Feature, discover, helpers, famous people, games. This is Character AI. This is a website that's been around for a while. One of the founders of the actual AI transformer model works for this company. They have their own homebrewed models here that all their characters base off of. And I think it's actually probably better than what we're seeing with Llama 2 and Meta AI. Again, I haven't really been able to test any of these characters out, but I know character AI is quite good. And in terms of creating characters, I would say it's better than ChatGPT for that. Because while ChatGPT is kind of programmed to be this AI bot helper and these things, well, when you create your own characters, and yes, you can create your own characters with character AI, 
they really seem like they're imbued with the essence of that character and they truly believe they are like Socrates, right? You're never going to convince Socrates that he is like an AI chatbot or something like that. He will fight back no matter what, where ChatGPT will probably break and stop acting like Socrates. Anyways, my point being that I think there's a little bit of influence from character AI here in Meta's brand new tools with all of these AI characters to explore. Not that character AI owns the right to such a thing, but but I think the influence is pretty clear. Oh, and it appears that uh, we already have accounts for these. They like do have posts of actual photos. Why the trees? Uh, pretty interesting. But yeah, this thing only has 237 followers. Oh, and these are all of the famous faces. You know, we got Tom Brady, Snoop Dogg is here. Snoop Dogg's clearly the best. I mean, they dressed him up so well. He's a dungeon master for Dungeons and Dragons. So yeah, that, that can kind of give you uh, an idea of where things are at. Yeah, see, he doesn't even have a thousand followers yet. But yeah, there is Snoop Dogg as the dungeon master. <laughs> it's, it's pretty insane. You might think with all these famous people, they must have voices attached to them, like cloned voices, because that's actually a technology that Meta does quite Quite well and well apparently not yet but that will be coming in the future so for now you can just chat with them and look at their very strange profiles like <laughs> so weird okay let's just take a look at their little demo video all right with this video i'm really hoping they didn't use copyrighted music let's go ahead and play it we built some ais you can interact with and then partnered with awesome people to play some of them to make them even more fun introducing meta's ais with Tom Brady as Brew, ready to throw you his deep knowledge of sports. Seriously? How could you not know that? Naomi Osaka as Tamika, proving it's cool to geek out. Time for a selfie. Chris Paul as Perry, he's preaching the gospel of golf. Drive for show, hunt for dough. Paris Hilton is Amber. She's taking a stylish bite out of crime. Not to brag, but I am a forensic expert. Mr. Beast is Zach. This dude's funny like funny funny i'm not saying i know everything <laughs> um israel adesanya as louise he'll make sure you never tap out the more you know the better you can move on the map kendall jenner as billy she'll always have your back i'll keep it real but above all i'll keep it on the dl roy Choi is max nix that delivery order you're cooking in tonight chef what's on the menu today charlie d'amelio is coco Making sure you and your moves aren't sus. Hey, y'all. You ready to dance? Snoop Dogg is Dungeon Master. Slay the games you love. Your quest begins now, player. So, if you're looking to explore your interests, learn a new skill, settle a debate, or just have fun, start using Meta's AIs. So yeah, that's their general lineup here. I'm definitely not like the target market for a lot of this because I find it pretty ridiculous. And like a lot of the stuff they're saying doesn't even make sense. They're, it sounds like they're just throwing in like popular catchphrases to make things sound hip. But I will say whoever came up with the idea to make Snoop Dogg a dungeon master is hilarious. And this is this is great. <laughs> like, it's just so ridiculous that it's actually funny now. And I actually like it. So you got to pull the full 360, guys. You can't go halfway like you did with most of these characters. Use our new suite of creative tools to turn your ideas into reality. They've got some pretty interesting stuff. Like you can just type in a prompt and it will automatically create stickers that you can use inside of all these messaging apps. Apps. Yeah, AI stickers, and actually a few of these do have text, but I'm not sure if those are already pre-made stickers or if those really are AI generated. The unicorn birthday cake looks pretty good though. Type in a text prompt and see how AI generated stickers provide infinitely more options to convey how you're feeling at any moment. This is honestly something I think I would use like every once in a while, but again, it's in all those meta apps, so I don't really text on those. And then they've got AI powered image editing. I don't know if I would go that far to call it straight image editing but they've got some pretty cool stuff. So you can apply new visual styles to your photos, which isn't something new in the world of AI, but it looks like they're doing a very good job implementing this and it seems to work very well. All you have to do is describe the effect you want applied. Just type in descriptors like grunge or watercolor and it will restyle and apply a brand new filter and essentially remake your image. And it can even go as far as to change the entire background around you, like in this example. But I think this example is a little too clean. No way it works that well. I don't know. We have haven't tried this out yet, but the examples they had in their keynote or meta connect looked really good for the restyling. 
And then there's a bunch of stuff about responsibility. You know, nothing earth shattering like a chat GPT four level AI LLM competitor that's open source or something like that. If you guys want to see a video on it, I will put these AIs to the test. I'm not sure if everyone wants to see that though. So you'll have to let me know. Anyways, at least Meta is smart enough to know that they have to focus on AI very in depth and integrate it into all of their products. So at least they're, they got a jump start on that for sure. One other thing they did mention in the keynote, but not on the website, is that they actually want to include all of these AI characters inside of VR that you can interact with in the quote unquote metaverse. I don't know how that whole metaverse thing is going for them. It doesn't seem to be going too well, but I think that interacting with AI characters inside of virtual reality is a really cool concept and something that I, I will definitely be exploring later. It's nice to see that that's something they're focused on. So speaking of AI image generators, Getty Images, which is a stock image website, they've got a massive collection of images to train AIs based off of, so it's not really that surprising they're releasing something, and they definitely aren't the only one. But yeah, they're introducing their own generative AI that's actually powered by NVIDIA, so they've outsourced all the AI development to create the images based off of their database to NVIDIA. It's commercially safe, which is nice. It's impactful and worry-free. And I gotta say, these images from Getty Images AI generator look pretty nice. They're all very photorealistic, but this is kind of mid-journey grade photorealism. That's what mid-journey does well. But yeah, they're definitely offering this up as a business solution. Partnered with NVIDIA, no surprise there. Best quality creative content and data. You can rest assured that the images you generate in licenses are backed by our uncapped indemnification. Now, Getty Images isn't the only one who has best quality creative content. Let's see. OpenAI clearly does because Dolly 3 looks amazing. Midjourney SDXL both do phenomenal. Oh, and you can't forget about Adobe and any number of other companies that also have a ton of image databases. And apparently they've also created a model that compensates creators so that the creators that have their work on Getty Images and is used in the AI model will get some form of a kickback. I don't know if it's substantial or not or how they're measuring it, but it's pretty interesting that they're going this route. It says request a demo right down here. So this thing really isn't out to the public yet. They're just announcing it. As you can see, this is sort of what their AI image generator looks like in terms of user interface. Looks very familiar to something like Adobe with their Firefly AI art image generator that is available online. You can have all types of images versus photos or just illustrations, different aspect ratios, and different colors and moods, which is an interesting way of doing that, but hey, it might be pretty useful. I, I like stuff like that. Weirdly enough, up here, there is a negative prompt that you can also add on to this thing, and this is like NVIDIA. You know, it's that doesn't just necessarily mean it's stable diffusion under the hood. It's probably one of NVIDIA's proprietary models, and they will have an API for this, so you might see it on other websites. It's interesting to see how many companies now are jumping on this generative AI train and really trying to get their version of the same tech out there. Anyways, the more quality AI image generators that exist in the market, the more pressure there is in general to produce better AI art image generators and especially ones that do compensate creators, let's say, or allow creators to at least opt out of their work being used in the models. Oh, one last really cool thing I wanted to show you guys is this post that was made in the Reddit group stable diffusion so this user was able to make an 107 megapixel image with stable diffusions upscaling it's really quite astonishing that you can push it to this limit and actually still have things coherent and visible but yeah definitely take a look at this the creator of this image obviously it's a face just shows you how insanely far in you can zoom with an 107 megapixel photo you can get so crazy close to all the little different details on the eyes you can actually see the texture on the skin and in the eyes and all the individual hairs that make up the eyelashes. It's really incredible. I haven't seen an AI image that is this high resolution yet. This could be the highest resolution AI image ever, but you can see all the different paint marks all over the face. I love stuff like this and I would love for higher resolutions to be integrated into things like Dolly 3 or Mid Journey more often because that's kind of one of the major downsides right now with AI imagery is that they're not very high resolution at all. They're they're usually like a 1024 by 1024 image, and this is much bigger than that just using upscaling. But pretty awesome stuff in general. I'm really, really
really impressed by this. I'm most impressed by the part that it got all of this detail and it still has this beautiful, fully coherent image. Yeah, the resolution for this is 21,956 by 32,000. This was all actually made using Comfy UI in the default workflow. You put an image in, you upscale by 1.5, repeat six times, save, touch up by 2.38 times, and sharpen with Topaz AI. After the fourth upscale, apparently it starts to hallucinate a little too much. But yeah, this is pretty awesome and shows you, you know, we're headed in the right direction with this technology. Things are definitely getting better day by day. So in the works, I have a larger AI news video that covers a lot of really interesting topics and delves deep into the new open AI stuff. So get prepared for that. Hopefully it will be releasing tomorrow. But for now, that's Meta AI's latest updates and a few other little things. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.